any passages that they've uncovered that they would like explanation of or at least some discussion of tonight before we start the Bible study that I've prepared. No? Okay. Uh, then um, I, I felt that it would be good to talk about the power of a positive attitude following the lesson that Brother Rivera, Deacon Rivera, did for us on last week. And so I see this as sort of a continuum of, a, of that uh, and, and maybe a little bit more of, as we get into it, a little bit more of a how-to than just a statement of what is going on. And so we're going to do that um, on tonight. Uh, but before we do that, it's April, and we need to do our Declaration of Kingdom Authority. And so I'm going to invite you to stand with me and to proclaim this declaration in Jesus' name. And as I've shared with you before, I, I pray that we are taking to heart the authority that God has given us everywhere we go. We walk with authority. And so this is a statement to let the devil know we know what power we have. All right? So can we, can we read together? You all are ready? Okay. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke all ungodliness and all principalities and powers assigned to infiltrate my home, the lives of my loved ones, and any other domain in which I have authority. I bind all strongholds, no matter where they exist, in my home, my church, my job, my city, my state, and or my country. I profess and declare, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, and that all ungodliness in every spiritual jurisdiction be in subjection to the will of God, crushed and broken under my foot. I declare that God's throne of righteousness is established in my heart and is the true source of all authority in all places everywhere. I therefore pray, decree, and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that all goods, all souls, all finances, and all resources are under God's control for his work or the work of spirit and truth, apostolic church, and for my good. I declare that I belong to Jesus. My family belongs to Jesus. My church belongs to Jesus. Vernon Rockville and its surrounding towns belong to Jesus. Connecticut belongs to Jesus. The United States of America belongs to Jesus. And the world belongs to Jesus. I speak, declare, and decree all of this in the exalted name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by the authority of his word and the power of his blood. Amen. Let's give the Lord a little hand praise in Jesus' name. For the authority that he has granted unto us, you may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my Lord, we have an honored guest in our midst. Surprise, surprise, Brother Bass. God bless you. And so um, today we're going to be studying, again, the power of a positive attitude. And I hope to show today that attitude is everything and that God has designed us in a way that we can control our attitude. Now, as I share with you prior to us doing the declaration, what brought this to my mind was this slide. Stinking thinking. Remember this from last week from uh, Deacon um, Rivera and uh, talking about these very toxic mindsets, very toxic, way, toxic ways of thinking. And the question is, well, how do we purge ourselves from stinking thinking? Well, the way you purge yourself from stinking thinking is, first of all, to get down into your attitude because attitude, there's a saying Attitude determines altitude. Just like within an airplane, the attitude is the position of the airplane relative, I'm assuming, to the earth. And without you knowing the attitude of the, of the airplane, it's going to be hard to get the right altitude. 
And so we thank and praise God for the ability to deal with this. Now, before we go into this, I have three key insights that I need to bring to your attention. Um, and, and some of this is going to be mixed with, with Bible, and some will be just general observations. Later on, we'll be doing a lot more just straight up Bible. Um, but this first key insight is coming from Romans 8.28. We know the scripture, and we know that all things work together for good. Uh, to them that love God, key point. Some people try to quote this scripture without that, that phrase, but all things are work to good for, all, for everybody. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, Romans 8.28. And so the first key insight is that all the experiences have, I mis, mistyped that, my grammar's wrong, all experiences have positive potential when we are in Christ and when we maintain a right attitude. I think this is an extremely powerful statement. Everything in your life can end up positive when you're in Christ and when you have turned your life over to the Lord and you've yielded your life to God, even your lemons can become the best lemonade on the planet. God can take our mistakes and turn them into very beautiful things. I remember hearing a story about um, a woman talking about her, her upbringing and her, she said her life was shattered, right? And, and, the, and the person mentioned, well, you know, then pick up the pieces of your shattered your life, your shattered window, and make a stained glass window out of it. And stained glass is almost like a bunch of little shattered pieces of glass put together with lead. And when it put together, it's still beautiful, right? Our lives, no matter how jacked up they have, may have been, prior to Christ or even in Christ. When we learn to turn ourselves over to the Lord, and a lot of this, again, is going to come into attitude, the Lord will take even our worst situations and circumstances and turn them to our good. So that's the first key insight. Never, ever, ever as a child of God feel like it's hopeless because it never is for a child of God. It never is. There's always hope as long as we have hope in Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the first key insight. Here's the second key insight from Proverbs 4.23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay? And so now I'm going to give you a chance to talk and ask you, what does this mean to you? What does this mean to you, this passage of Scripture? All right, Brother Andrew is going to start us off. Microphone anywhere around? Right behind you? One behind you? Oh, okay. It probably needs to be turned on, on. Did that mic cover come off? Yeah, here, the mic covers right behind you, Mike. I mean, Brother Andrew. <laughs> Mike, the mic, the mic, Mike, Mike. Is, is the praise God. <laughs> All right, praise God. Um, yeah, this scripture reminds me um, to keep your heart part of the fruits of the Spirit. Okay. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. Yes. And self-control. Uh -huh. So out of those things, um, there's another scripture I think of that says, uh, the the fruit trees basically of uh -huh. the, in the Old Testament says the fruit trees of that field uh -huh. is consists of a man's life. Okay. Yeah. So that kind of all goes together with the issues of life, kind of like out of the heart comes out either those good things or or evil things. That's right. And it kind of uh, projects your life in a sense. Okay. Good. Good. So out of your heart comes either good or evil, and you use the word projects your heart. Okay, well, let's bring a, uh, maybe some additional specificity to that because you're right on the right path. Uh, any other thoughts? What does this mean to you? Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Yes, Sister Webster. Mike's coming your way from the behind you. Yes. Mike. We got, they've got mics over here. Oh, did you keep that one over here in case you need it? Yeah, yeah, they've got two over here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise him. I was thinking about um, the word protect. Yes. Protect your heart with all diligence. Yes. Meaning be careful about what you consume. Okay. Be careful about what you um, expose yourself to. Uh-huh. And then also when bad emotions come up, you have to deal with them. All right. So that word protection which is what keep is here, is a very important word. 
it is telling you, you have to do some work to guard or keep your heart. Because as Brother Andrew brought out, what comes out of that heart is going to bear a fruit. It's going to bear something. Okay, what else? What else do you see here? What else do you see here? Any other thoughts? Any other implications? Do, 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 do. All right, Brother Bass. Yes, Brother Bass. Uh, yeah, make sure that red button's on. For some reason, the word pure is coming to mind. The word pure? Yes. Why is that? What, what, what is evoking that concept in your mind? I, I don't know. It's just in my spirit. Something about the heart and being protected and just trying to keep it pure. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's so. exactly right. You want to keep the heart undefiled. That's the guarding part again. That's the protecting part. We want to keep it pure. All right? Elder? Yes, Go Pastor. On. Um, sometimes you wonder when you speak with people, like everything is always negative with them. Okay. I mean, if it's sunny, well, it's not that sunny. Uh-huh. Uh, and if it's snowing, you know, it's almost like a blizzard to them. Yes. So that's because, as Sister Webster had mentioned, they're not keeping their heart with all diligence. Uh-huh. And then what flows out of them, their issues are bad, uh-huh. are negative. Yes. Because they haven't guarded their heart. And if things get in your heart, there is a remedy to sweep it clean. Yes. Keep it clean. Yes. Because none of us are perfect. That's right. That's right. Now, um, you brought up another word there I was hoping somebody would hit, which is diligence. It doesn't just say it's how to keep your heart. It says with all diligence. That means you have to be actively focused on making sure you don't let things get in your heart that can harm your life. Because from your heart, are going to precede the attitudes that you need to be successful in life. That's the issues of life. If you don't guard that, your life is going to be a product of the things that you let get in your heart. And if you weren't conscious about how you did that, some very bad things can get in there. Some stinking thinking can get into that heart and actually have now an impact on your life. You're like, well, why is my life going the way it's going? Well, it's part of it is that attitude because, as Elder Rosado mentioned, the heart can either be a pessimistic heart yeah. or an optimistic heart. A pessimistic kind of heart, it always gravitates to problems. It always sees the problems. I don't care what you do. There's always a, there's a yeah, but. There's always a yeah, but that follows, right? The sun is out. Yeah, but it's going to be hot. <laughs> yeah, but I could get cancer from it. I, I, yeah, really, seriously, I mean, it, it, there's always a negative thought that follows it. it it's a heart that, that's focused on failures. This ain't right. That's not right. I didn't do this right. They don't do that right. right? It's always critical in the negative sense of the word. It always is picking, finding something wrong. It's filled with doubt. I don't know if we can do that. I'm not sure I can do that. It's, it's a heart that's full of fear. Right? It doesn't try things or do things because I just might, I might fail. Somebody might see I don't know what I'm doing. Right? I might say something that, 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 that somebody doesn't agree with and I don't. Right? And so so it, it, it constrains and it constricts on and on and on and on. That's a pessimistic heart. An optimistic heart is just the opposite of it. it when it sees situations, even when there's challenges, there's an opportunity. There's, there's, a, there's a chance here now to do something I couldn't do before. There, it sees success. It's like, hey, yeah, there's a problem. But, man, when we get over this, we're going to be in a good position, right? What about it, 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 it's walking by faith? Yeah, I, yeah, this looks sort of hope, hopeless, but, you know, through God, all things are possible, right? It's pulling. It just keeps pulling on the positive things. It takes courage. Even when, even when there's some fear there, it said, well, yeah, I'm, I don't know if I can quite do this, but, you know, I'm going to give it a shot anyhow, right? you got to guard your heart because the, the attitudes you reflect are a product of what you let get in there. And if you are prone 
to that more pessimistic side, that just means you got to dig into your heart a little bit more and say, what's down in there? What, 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 why is it that I see things that way? Right? And begin to look for the, the, the things that maybe in the past or in the present might be producing that kind of negativity and recognize that that's not the will of God for you. Okay, This is keeping your heart diligently is recognizing that my heart has a huge impact on my life. And like, like right now, I feel like shouting. I, I, I could go into a holy dance right now. And I have my sneakers on, so I could actually do it probably. <laughs> feet, getting, feet, feet getting better. Um, but but I, I get there because, saints of God, this is, this is one of those things in life that people just completely overlook. It's so simple, but it's so profound. I have seen every environment I've walked into over my 61 years of living, I've seen everything change just because I focus on my attitude, okay? Your attitude of heart is going to determine the quality of your life. If your life is full of anxiety and, you know, um, controversy and, you know, fights and vickering and all sorts of just unharmonious living, many times the issue's you. It's not other people. Only you can control your attitude. Nobody else can do that. You, you have to surrender that to someone, and even then, you're still doing it. You're just allowing their attitude to infect yours. Now, that could be positive, too, because if you're around somebody who's always up and let's go, that can also breathe some life in you. But if you're finding a chronic life of issues and problems, don't look at other people for the source of the issue. Look at you, because only you can control your heart. Yes. Pastor Black, perhaps people may be thinking uh, online or here, um, well, Pastor Black, you know, being optimistic, you know, I don't want to be phony or fake. Yes, good you know, point. You know, sounding like, you know, everything is great when it's not. Um, I, I was thinking about when I've gone wrong in the years of being saved, and when I've sinned and, and failed God, I was optimistic. And what I mean is that I was just truthful and said, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take care of this. Yes. I failed God and I didn't meet up to the standard that I should have. But that's being optimistic. I wasn't saying that nothing didn't happen and everything is great. No, I was optimistic. I said, okay, let me just be honest with myself and with God. And God honors that. Yes, he does. And you clean your heart when you do that. Yes, you do. And, and nothing else but positive things will come out of that, even out of a bad situation. That's right. Because God honors that. Yes, he does. And all things work together for good to them that love God. Excellent point. This isn't Pollyanna. You don't know who Pollyanna is? Okay. <laughs> Some of us who are really old-time movie watchers, there's a movie called Pollyanna. Beautiful, beautiful movie, you know, sweet movie. Um, I don't want to get distracted there. But, but, but she, I mean, this girl would see positivity in everything. I mean, everything. She actually ends up turning a preacher around. Because the preacher's, the preacher's constantly preaching hellfire brimstone. And she talks to the preacher about happy scriptures. But see, he had another person influencing him, the woman who had all the money in the town. And she thought, you need to preach fire and brimstone. So he was preaching to uh, please appease her. And then this little girl comes in and starts talking about how my daddy says there are more happy scriptures than there are sad scriptures. And she's right. <laughs> right? So, but to her, everything was glorious. So we're not saying you have to be Pollyanna, Pollyanny, um, nor that you can't be pragmatic. See, pragmatic says, hey, man, I call, I, I call it as I see it. There's nothing, you can be pragmatic and not be pessimistic. Because pessimism is about what is happening and how it's going to translate into the future. Pessimism projects badness on your future. 
Optimism does the opposite. It recognizes there's problems. And trust me, I, in my own home, but primarily on my job, I dealt with a lot of problems. Every day there's problems. But I had to look beyond the problems to the solutions. Because somebody's got to get us to solution world. <laughs> if, if we all fall in problem world, we're going to have problems. Obviously. All right? So, so, so this, is not, you, this doesn't mean you have to walk around and, oh, the sun shines out. Sky, science, you know, there's always sunshine. The skies are always bright. Blue sky smiling at me. <laughs> Nothing but blue sky. Do I see? No, you, you don't have to walk around, right, like that. But there should be, even in the midst of trying circumstances, a realization that a better outcome for me is possible because I walk with Christ. That's why I put that Christ part in that, that first part of that scripture. That with God, our lives are different. We're not like the world. The world can't say what I just said. Because sometimes their situations go from hell to hellish to heller ish <laughs> Right? They get worse and worse and worse because they have no Jesus. We've got Christ. And he's promised us that we, he would never leave us nor forsake us. And again, that all things work together for our good. Okay? So that was the second insight. The, the attitude of your heart will determine the quality of your life. Here's the third insight. Self-talk drives what gets into your heart. So be careful. Self-talk. What's self-talk? Talk to me. Yes. Your thoughts. Get, 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 get your my, thoughts. Your thoughts. What about your thoughts, so Sister Raquel? I guess just your daily thinking and thinking of outcomes or just your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, they, they are your thoughts, but are they just random thoughts that run through your head? It's usually negative. Well, for me, at least. M many, well, and self-talk doesn't have to be negative, right. but many times when we think of self-talk, it's negative. I've got you on the queue, right? Um, um, but again, is it, is it uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to be Socratic here and not just give it away. All right, Lady Black and then Sister um, Amanda. It's really the things that you say to yourself. Okay. So it's whether you're encouraging yourself, right? Like uh, what I did, I mean, for example, what I did was stupid, okay? Yes. Where am I going with that? But then I go, okay, well, I made a mistake. I can, I can recover, whatever. It's the, things, it's the things that you say to yourself, how you either encourage or discourage yourself, whether you build yourself up or whether you tear yourself down. Yes. So it's what you, it's your thoughts about you. It's, it's you hearing you talk to you and say things about you. We, we got Sister um, Lamara, though, right behind you. She's got a, she's got a word for us, too. And, and then and then and then we'll we'll go a little further. Um, praise the Lord. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just things like you know you're saying like oh, I'm stupid or you uh -huh. know just uh -huh. constant um, negative self talk. Um, yes. I don't do that as much. I do know someone that does. <laughs> um, uh huh. And the thing is, is it's like you can kind of see the downward spiral. Okay. And it's like don't go there. Don't keep saying that because when you keep saying that out loud and you, even though it's thoughts and you keep saying it and saying yeah. it, you're actually believing what you're saying. Uh -huh. And you don't have to believe those negative thoughts that you're saying because that's just what it is. It's, it's, you know, it stems from guilt. It stems from all these things that, you know, you're not good enough. No, none of us are good enough. Ultimately, Christ is the one who is, you know, perfect. Yeah. But, you know, you strive for that. So, yep. yeah, you can talk negative over yourself or you can talk positive and be like, you want to know what? I can do this today. Right. I'm able to do that today. Right, right. Okay. Brother Andrew, Mike's right behind you. Brother Andrew. And then we'll get you, Brother Dan. Okay. So I was saying first. Oh, praise God. I was just going to add that self-talk uh, without Christ Sometimes uh -huh. you can't get away from self-talk because uh -huh. it's those thoughts that you keep thinking about and it's hard to deviate from. Uh -huh. But in Christ, I want to go from self-talk to God's word and uh -huh. let God speak to me. So I think being able to meditate on God's word, uh -huh. I don't think we realize how, uh, how blessed we are because uh -huh. God's word can break 
break the, that self-talk that usually is negative. We, God's work can break that and uh -huh. help us to change our identity, uh -huh. change the way we think about our future, uh -huh. you know, help us to be more spiritually minded, uh -huh. um, help us to have joy. Yeah, you know, knowing that our sins are forgiven and that we have, yeah, we have an expected end with Him. So all, all that good, God. It's really God talk is what we want. We uh -huh. don't really want self talk. We want uh -huh. God to be speaking to us and meditating on His Word. Okay. Okay. Oh, I, re I really. Um, <laughs> mm, let's let Brother Bass go, and then and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dive a little bit deeper, and then we'll come to Brother Andre, and we'll dive a little deeper. All right, come on, Brother. Um, when I Alexander, see it, sorry. when I see it. Uh huh. Uh, it's power in the tongue. So whatever, okay. so whatever you speak, especially if it's coming from the heart, it's going to come true. Because uh -huh. it's power in the tongue. All right. So now, you, now you're bringing some more scripture in play. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. So the, the, the kind of talk you do is not always talk out loud. Right? And, and, and I'm marveling. I'm marveling because... So far, well, Brother Andre, uh, Alexander, you, you go because I don't, you, you might say what I'm about to say. And, and if you do, I want to be able to give glory to God through you. No, um, praise the Lord. I just wanted to uh, mention that I think this is one concept right here that even the world may have right in the sense of a lot of the, like, a huge thing in the world today is positive affirmations. Yes. Speak positive over yourself. Right? Yes. And so, and, and then they, they take it as, few notches further right? right but but if you stay within this realm right here you know not uh, of course you know there's scriptures and, and, and biblical support to to back everything up absolutely but there's words you can speak over yourself that aren't necessarily biblical in a sense or scripture but it's still you know it's still positive though you know it's uh -huh. just a it's and i can guarantee you whatever you speak over yourself that's positive you can find bible for it i can almost guarantee you Right. So 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 what you're saying, what you're saying is exactly right, Brother Alexander. In fact, what you're saying, see, you are uncovering where I was about to go. Why is it that the most time when we think about self-talk, it's negative? Because the same self-talk that's negative, that creates all the bad things we talked about, that same self-talk, if it's positive, can have the same positive effects or the same magnitude of effect. And we know Positive self-talk is godly talk. It's coming from the word, but it's talk nonetheless to yourself. Because you can read the Bible, but if you don't talk to yourself about what you're reading, there's no effect. There's no penetration. You've got to have, so everybody has self-talk, and it's not all negative. In fact, I, I, I submit to you, it must be positive in its fullest extent, if you want to end up being what Christ wants you to be, okay? Yes, Sister Andrew. Microphone. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Um, <clears throat> so I see self-talk, not necessarily because I don't really struggle with that, um, but more of talking negative to a situation or seeing it from a, a negative perspective and that's where the Bible comes into play because you need to be able to see it from God's perspective Absolutely. for whatever situation you're going through. Um, so it may not necessarily yourself bad talking to you. Yes. But you can be negative talking to your situation that you're in. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You, it, it can manifest itself in a lot of different ways, right? And one of them could be you talking to you. The other could be you talking to other people. But I'm going to submit something to you. If you talk like that to other situations, it's probably because there's something talking to you. Nine out of ten times. There's a seed there. There's a seed there, okay? Because the devil plants seeds. Yes, Brother Suarez. Praise the Lord. Um, so I was thinking more like um, self-talk could be also like a fiery dart from the enemy. Yes. And the best way to put that out is by praising the Lord. Yes. Because sometimes I, I start thinking about, like, the sins that I've done in the past. Yes. Out of nowhere. And I have to remember, you know, yeah, praise the Lord. Praise yeah. the Lord. Jesus. Thank you, right. Jesus, for saving me. Right. Right, 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 right. So, so, so self-talk can manifest itself really as the devil talking to you. Yeah. It's not even really you. 
But if you own it, if you don't rebuke it or bring it in captivity to Christ, you will start to talk that way about you when it all it was was an implantation of the devil. Just like the word of God can implant in you positive thoughts. You might be feeling down. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Well, Pastor Black didn't come up with that. That's the word. But it talks to me. And then I own it. So now it's my self-talk. But it's coming from the word. Very, very, very powerful. One other quick question before I go into the next part of this slide. Where does a lot of self-talk outside of the devil and God? Where does a lot of self-talk emanate from? What's its source? Sister Amanda, what's its source? What does this self-talk come from, um, I, negative or positive? I would say it could come from someone's insecurities. Well, it comes out of an insecurity. Out of an insecurity. I'm asking where's, well, where did that insecurity come from? Mm-hmm. Yes. It could maybe come from like a hurt or absolutely um, something to that effect, like a hurt or uh, maybe discouragement. Or uh huh. Notice how negative we use. Mm. Yeah, we're talking about negative things, right? It's Sister Andrew and then Elder. Microphone, Sister Andrew. Yep. Where does it come from? Okay. Praise the Lord. So, um. I would say your upbringing. Yes. Because I dealt with a lot of that growing up, and I had to, God had to really reframe my way of thinking about me. Because growing up, all I heard was negative things of who I was. Yes. And so that will affect yes. your life later on and everything you do. Yes, yes, so you yes. You have to like really redefine yourself in Christ when you come to the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Yes, 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 yes. Right? But not even, not just on the negative side either, too, though. On the positive side, children who are affirmed by their parents don't tend to have as much negative self-thinking. But when you've raised yourself and you've not had a parent to speak into your life with power and authority and good things, Who's left to speak into your life when you're young? The devil. Because a lot of times people don't even take their kids to church. They don't even learn good Bible stories anymore. Why is the suicide rate for young people so high? Because the self-talk is really devil talk that they've owned. Brother Santos. Praise the Lord. I was about to say that. <laughs> you, from the heart. From the heart. Yes. Yeah, you got to get in there and purge that heart. Uh, yeah. Another one could be the company that you keep. Absolutely. What's the old, what's the old saying from, from the old people? Birds of a feather flock together. The people you hang around will determine the way you start thinking and what you start owning. So if you're around a bunch of negative people, that's going to rub off on you. But if you're assuming, again, you're not on your knees and you don't have power, because trust me, and, and, and I'm not bragging here, but I, I, can, I can speak what I've done. I've been around a lot of negative people in my life, but I don't let that venom get inside of me. If anything, I turn the thing around. Hey, I'm the light of the world. So everywhere I go, I'm supposed to be changing the environment. People aren't supposed to change me. I'm supposed to change them. So I don't own other people's dysfunction in my heart and in my mind. God owns that. My heart is his temple. That's his place. And so, so we don't have to necessarily be influenced by other people, but you're exactly right. Whoever said that, okay. People around you can do that. Brother Alexander. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to tag on to that point of just, you know, if you, she said if your parents don't do it while, the, while you're young, the devil will. And yeah, absolutely. A, a big way that the devil can use, can, can do that is through the ways of the school, the school system. Absolutely. And it was a huge one for me. Yes. Educators can ruin yes. a child's yes. mind yes. by telling them you're this or yes. you're not that or you're yes. not competent enough. Yes. And so, you know, I just wanted to bring that point that ed the, edu the, you know, the school system and educators have a huge role 
in how they can speak and shape a child's mind. Don't you ever tell your child you're dumb. Don't you ever call your child stupid. Don't you ever use any other kind of bad label for your kids. They may not be perfect. They may not be Einstein. But don't label them with things that now they use as self-talk. Because this is what you don't want. You want to drive more positively. Whoops, I made a mistake versus I'm so dumb. I like me versus nobody likes me. <laughs> Sass just kicked in. Song Association Syndrome. Do you all know the worm song? Okay. I like the worm song, but I won't give it to you right now. Okay. Um, I did something bad versus I'm a bad person. Right? This is really hard, but I'm going to keep trying versus I give up. I'm never going to be able to do this. Or this is never going to change. Okay? I haven't figured it out yet versus I never get anything right. I am enough and worthy too versus I'm not good enough. This, the, you you want to you switch your talk because the way you talk to you is going to determine the way you start seeing life. Problems hit us all. The Bible says a man is born of a woman is a few days and in full of trouble. We all got trouble. But you can't let trouble be the thing that determines your outlook on life. Jesus said in the world you're going to have what? Tribulation. But, but, cancel out, be of good cheer. Why? Because I've overcome the world. See, you're going to have trouble in the world, but Jesus overcame the world. So in Jesus, you have the ability to overcome. Hence, the Bible says, we are more than overcomers. God causes us to triumph, the Bible says, in every place. This you must believe about yourself. This you must embrace. When all that negative talk is coming at you about what you're not, you need to grab a hold, as Brother Andrew said, to the Word of God, if it's not just intrinsically in you, and get this Word in you. Thy Word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee, but also that I can keep a right attitude. Got to get that word down in your heart so that like, 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 like water hitting the ground and causing something to sprout, the word of God is like that in your heart. As soon as the devil tries to hit you with something, that shield of faith, you didn't let that fiery dart get through because your shield of faith blocked it. That's that word of God. Okay? So that's the third key insight. Be careful of your self-talk because your self-talk will have an impact on the quality of your life. Okay? All right. Question? Comment? Brother Crispin? Question? Okay. No worries. Somebody Someone can. commented, um, the way you talk to you is how you end up talking to others. Yes. Affecting their mindset, too. It's like a negative... Yes, yes, that, 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 that's my point about ultimately you, you got to be careful because sometimes the way we evaluate things has something to do with what's going on inside of us. Not all the time now, not all the time, so don't go off on the deep end on me, right? Not all the time, but you want to examine that heart to see, hmm, hmm, maybe I'm trying to just, while well, I'm saying that, think of an example. Right, where you know sometimes sometimes it's just a matter of a doofus. You know what a doofus is? Uh, when you doofus somebody, so like maybe there's a person that you you always see and and they do stupid stuff, and so when you see them, you just go, oh, that's they just they're just stupid, right? But that's because you've doofused them. They might be doing something perfectly okay, but because in your head you've called them a doofus. Now everything you see that they do is doofusy. See, the, the, problem, the issue is that them, that's not you being pragmatic. That's your bias coming in there. To the pure, all things are pure. But to the unbelieving and defiled, there's nothing pure. Again, the point here, search you. Search you. Search you. So that you can cleanse yourself of that. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about attitude. So the, the mental and emotional state of mind that determines behavior is attitude. It's your, notice I say mental and emotional state. Those things 
affect how you behave. Because at the end of the day, it's not our thoughts that really have consequence. It's our behavior. Jesus said, blessed are the hearers of the word, right? Ah, he didn't say blessed are the hearers of the word. He said blessed are the doers of the word. See, with God, it's always about what are you doing? What are you doing? Not just what you say you're believing. What are you doing? Because what you're doing lets us know what you believe, what's coming from your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay? So your attitude is what dictates how you're going to behave. Because attitude sets the framework for how you see things. Right? You just got into a big fight with your boss, right? Two attitudes you can take. My boss don't like me, so now we got a problem. Or there was just a misunderstanding between me and my boss. The attitude you take is going to determine how you behave. Because if you say, we got a problem, now every time you get ready to interact with them, what you're going to be remembering is, we got a problem. And so now you're going to be having problems because you prophesied that. Remember, out of your mouth issues of life too, right? Versus we had a misunderstanding. So now when you go to him, you're not carrying this bag and said, I got a problem with you. You're just like, hey, we had a misunderstanding last time. Let's clear that up. Your attitude determines your behavior, okay? The choice is yours. How you behave is your choice. And let me show you how this works, Okay? So it starts off in your thought life. That's why we talked about that self-talk. What are you thinking about? What are you consuming? When you get up in the morning and you pray, and I hope we do that, we're church people. We should be prayers. We should First thing in the morning, you should get on your knees and pray. Don't pick up that phone and start reading Facebook posts and people's blurbs and all that kind of stuff because now that's getting in you. The first thing in the morning, you're putting junk in you. Let the first thing in your heart in the morning be God's voice speaking to you, and the second thing be his word. Let that set the tone for what you perceive and what you think and what you feel. Okay? So your thought life, it starts in your thoughts. It's, and I just feel that, it, I don't know, I feel like I'm almost preaching here, but I just need you to turn to your neighbor and say, it, it starts in your thoughts. We're just going to reinforce this, right? Okay, from your thoughts proceed your beliefs. What you think about becomes what you start to believe, okay? What we think influences what we believe. So the Bible says, what sort of things are lovely, just pure, honest, what? Think on these things so that you begin to believe in those things. Versus thinking upon a problem. The Bible says, a man, as a man thinketh in his heart, what? So is he. The way you think, the way your thoughts, I use the term fire, the way your brain fires, how you go from one thought to the next thought to the next thought to the next thought to the next thought. You need to sometimes sit back and ask yourself, how do you think? And, and watch, it, it's the way my thinking is going where I end up in the, in the gutter, and I don't mean the gutter is in sin. I mean, but in a bad place, or do my thoughts proceed so that I, I end up in, a, in a, a relatively positive place? Your beliefs are based upon what you think. What you believe about this word is based off of what you think about this word. Do you really believe that man doesn't live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? All right? So, and once, once those beliefs take a hold of you, what we believe influences how we feel. So now, this is why I said it's, 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 it's emotional and attitudinal here. Now, the way we're thinking and the way we're believing starts to impact the way we start feeling about life around us. Either we're happy about our circumstances or we're sad about them. Either we're happy about a person or we're mad at them. Or we're indifferent. We don't know how we think about them. All of this is coming from what started in your thought life and how it got into your heart. 
what you started believing about that person, that situation, that job, that boss, that son, that daughter, all started in your head. It did not start with their actions. It started in your head how you evaluated those actions. And that now starts to impact how you feel. You ever been around somebody that all they have to say is good morning and you're ready to hit them? I mean, somebody who just gets your goat. They, they just know they know how to ring your bell. That's probably because something else happened in the past that you thought about and you came to a conclusion. And so now when you see them, that's that thought and that belief about them is now affecting how you feel about them. And it could be years later. It could be decades later. A lot of people run into this problem with their parents. They're mad at their parents. They're mad. But they've never admitted that they're mad. And it's affecting their attitude. This is why you want to get inside your heart. What did, what did, what did David say to God in Psalm 51? Create in me a clean heart. And renew the right spirit within me. See, you got to go to God and ask God to help them. Ask him to help you clean yourself. This is what Sister Angela was saying a little bit earlier. She had to go to God and ask God to help her cleanse her thoughts. Brother Andrew? Yes. Um, while you were talking, I was thinking about forgiveness. Um, Absolutely. Because there's so many things that uh, life, you know, has, uh, you know, people take advantage of us. Um, there's just life situations that happen. We can get mad at God. You know, yes. For some, for somebody getting sick or dying or things like that. Yes. So things, some things are out of our control. Yes. That get into our heart. So it's not like we chose to have that get into our heart. But right. It's, it's there. That's right. But I think the next step is that forgiveness is really, I, I, because I remember for me, uh, I had to forgive my dad. Right. And before I did that, I didn't realize how, like that dark cloud that was over me that I yes. just, I felt like everything I did. I was not good enough and yes. all those things. And then God showed me I need to forgive my dad. Yes. And the minute that I, I really, truly forgave my dad in my heart, it was like I was able to walk in a different way. Yes. You know, I was able to walk freer. And so I think that's a huge part of the heart and changing the attitude is you can't change people, but you can, you can forgive them. Oh, and, 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 and I wanted you to use that same word, though. Okay, so did you did you create that problem with your dad? Did you make that happen? No. No. So you so you didn't create that. You can't change that. Right. But you could change your decision to forgive or not to forgive. Right. Yes. We all have the power to change what's around us. Not just to forgive now, to change the nature of the whole inter You have that power. Do you want to choose it or not? That's the question. Are you willing to let the change occur? Or do you want to stew in pessimism? It's that simple. That's why, to me, this is so powerful. Because the power, remember, the choice is yours. What are you going to choose to do? And then once it gets out of your attitude, now it gets into your actions. I mean, out of your feelings. Your attitude, feelings, right? Once it gets past that, now you start doing stuff. And you notice I got the little guy there kicking somebody. Right? Or saying something, right? right? Bad actions come from the fact that you thought about it, you start believing something, then your attitude was like, I'm going to get them next time I see them. And then when you see them, you get them. Right? You do something. This, and it wasn't spur of the moment. This was premeditated. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? I wasn't sitting there thinking about how I wanted to hurt somebody. Not specifically what you did. But what was premeditated was your hurt and your attitude, and you wanted some relief for that, or you wanted to, what's the, the right term, like get that out, vent it. You wanted to vent it. And so you vented it, all right. And then after you vent it, ugh, now you got a whole other set of circumstances to work with. But nonetheless, that attitude is going to influence your actions, and then after those actions, those actions reinforce how you think. This is a cycle, people. This is a cycle in your life. Belief, our thoughts to belief, 
belief to attitude, attitude to action. And depending on that action, it's going to either reinforce that same attitude or make it worse. And it's going to go around again. And then it's either going to reinforce or go around again. Unless you choose to change the cycle from what is called a vicious cycle, vicious meaning something bad, to something that's virtuous. To where the actions that you start taking are actions that transcend human thought, human behavior, human action, so you become more Christ-like. Because remember, the Lord told us, blessed are the what? Well, that's sort of broad in there. Blessed are the peacemakers. Why? Who are, who are the peacemakers? The children of God. They're going to be the children of God. Right? And so your, your, your desire in this cycle is to always be able to function in a way to where you can live peaceably with all men. That's really what you're after. Right? As opposed to being at war with all men. Oh, my goodness. You said everybody. Absolutely right, Elder. I mean, I could, I, could, I, I, I could pull out the shave. I could put some shaving cream on us right now and pull out the razor and just shave real close. Because a lot, oh, I'm trying, Lord, I'm trying. A lot of us are really good at blaming other people for the dysfunction in our own heart. It is not other people. It's you. It's me. And until I own it, nothing's going to change. If I keep deflecting, it's them. If they would be more like this, if they would be more like this, if they would be more like this, you, you're never going to get there. Oh, my God. See, I have to shout. Oh, this is, this is, this is life-changing. It takes two people to fight. I learned this a long time ago. You can get as mad. Sarah, I'll pick on you. Sarah, you can get as mad at me, Pastor, as you want to get. I mean, you could get so mad you start turning red. Your knuckles get clenched, and you're like, I'm going to hit him. And, and you can look at me, and this is, this is the opposite of who this girl is, but you can look at me and burn here. I will get you. And I'll be like, I love you, Sarah. Because, see, her attitude doesn't affect my attitude. Who controls that? Me. And any time I let somebody else's attitude influence me, I've given them too much power. Because the only person who deserves the power over my attitude is Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can turn my heart whithersoever he pleases. And this is the way we have to fortify ourselves. So you want this cycle to be virtuous. You want it to reinforce good things, that happy looking face up there, not that face. Right? That's what we're looking for. Good? Questions, comments? Okay, I'm going to keep rolling. See, it's all about focus. What you focus on, you're going to have. Okay, turn to the person next to you and say, what you focus on, you're going to have. Okay, another way to say that, what you focus on is what you're going to see. I'm going to prove it to you tonight. What you focus on is what you're going to see. And you always move towards what you focus on. Oh, Father. Ha! <sighs> this side is the bad side. <laughs> this side is the good side. Okay? If I'm focusing on good things, I'm going to find myself hanging out over here a little bit more. Look at all the nice smiles and beautiful faces, thumbs up. I look over there, and I don't see all that going on. I see, <laughs> ah, yeah, see, both of them gave me thumbs down, right? right? So, but if I'm focused on negative things, man, I'm going to come over here with a people like, you know, everybody's biting on nails. Right? Right? <laughs> so you will, you will move in life towards what you focus on. So if you're always focused on how everything's bad, guess what you're going to start seeing? Everything's bad. You're going to self-fulfill a prophecy. You did that by what you focused on. This is so powerful. Oh, God, if I wish you could grab it. <sighs> but if you choose through the glory of God, to focus on things that are above. Set your affections, the Bible says, on things that are above, not on things of the earth, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Then you will find you will start to see more heavenly things because that's where you're focused. Okay, let's talk about it. What do you see? 
Who sees an old lady? Raise your hand. Well, I asked for who sees an old lady. Raise your hand. Some do. Who sees a young lady? Raise your hand. Who sees both? Who don't see nothing? <laughs> okay. Oh, we got some no-seers. Okay. You see a kid? Okay. Okay. I'm going to show you the old, the old person. For the old person, this is her nose, her, 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 her mouth, her chin, and her eye. And her hair, she's got a scarf on. You all see that now? If it's a young person, her head is turned away from you, and this is her, this is her hair. It's black hair. She's got a feather in her hair. That's her nose right there. This is her jawbone, and this is her neck, and she's got a necklace on. Everybody's looking at the same picture, but you're seeing something different based on your bias of what you focus on. You go towards your focus. And some people, once they see the, 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 the young lady, they can't see the old woman because the, the young lady is too predominant in their, in their eyes now. Some people see the old woman, they can't see the young woman because of where they're focused. Same picture, people. Same picture. Which is right? Is it an old woman or a young woman? It's both. So when you are fighting with somebody, it's an old woman. No, it's a young woman. No, it's an old woman. No, it's a young woman. You're both right. It's your perspective. Learn that your perspective's not the only one. Somebody else might have a different thought than you. Glory, hallelujah. You, you're not God's gift to the world for understanding. You see the necklace now. Now you see the lawyer. The more you look for it, the more you look for it, the more you'll see it. Okay, so who sees a goblet? Who sees two old people? Raise your hand. Who sees a guy playing a guitar and a young person next to him? Raise your hand. Who sees both? Okay, y'all see a little bit more there. What else do you see? You see a person in the man's ear? What else do you see? Yes. How many see the cup? Okay. See, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Same picture, but you can see something different. What about this? What do you see? What do you see? Duck. Rabbit. Duck or rabbit? Both. You can see the rabbit now? Can you really? Okay, let's, I want you to be, I want you to, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Is it, well, it's the rabbit sort of looking up with his ears back. Here's his ears, there's his eye, there's his mouth, the rabbit. If it's the duck, it's the other way around. That's the bib, the, the bill, the eye, and the back of the head. Same picture, same picture, different perspectives. Different ways of seeing things causes you to see a different reality. And if I wasn't here to mediate, some of y'all would go to war. <laughs> that ain't old man. That's right. What are you talking about? That's a young man. That's a young. What are you talking about? You can't see. We we'll be calling people names, and you know they're blind. We get home and we're just roasting them on the spit. We've all done this. Well, we've been so convinced that what we see is right. But what I've learned and what I try to even use in my pastoring is that I see a lot of rightness in this word. But I got to be careful because my eyes aren't the only eyes that read the word. Okay? We're not done. Yeah, yes. I feel like what you're describing, too, is kind of how God can breathe one word into your situation mm -hmm. and change your whole viewpoint of it instead of it being negative he can always change it to something positive and i think that's part of what you're absolutely, trying to bring out absolutely absolutely brother that's why i wanted to dance this out earlier because see god doesn't have to change the situation to change the situation he just has to be able to change you if you let him change you the situation will change 
Some of us are so focused on, God, you got to change this. You got to change that person. You got to fix this. You got to fix that. You got to fix that. Fix, 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 fix. You, 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 you. And God said, okay, shut up and let me change you. If you let me change you, all that stuff will change. But if you won't let me change you, that ain't going to change. Yes, Lady Black. That really is the amazing part about God because sometimes the situation doesn't change, right? When you change, the situation is the same, but Mm -hmm. now you're able to bear it and endure it. Absolutely. God doesn't come in and rescue us from every bad situation we're in. He wants to teach us that even in your bad, I can take your bad and make it good. All things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. When life throws you those lemons, God's going to make a really nice lemonade out of it. If you yield yourself to him, there's nothing impossible to God, but you got to want to. If you haven't want to, nothing to change. Okay, we're not done yet. One more of these. What do you see? You see a horse? A man, a man, and you see, do you say you see two things? (laughs) You see a valley too, okay, in a stream, yep. You see a mummy, somebody laying on the ground, wrapped up. You see a river. You still see a man. A lot of different things here. So if you look at it in the broad way, you know, if you see a man, this is his nose, right? This is his beard. This is his hair. Or you can see a man on a horse by a river. Or at, you can see the lady who's laying down on the ground. I say it's a lady, but wrapped up in a blanket, right? There's, there's a lot there. Up there? Yeah, well, actually, you know what it does? A bridge or a vault or something like that? I see that too. I hadn't, seen that. I hadn't noticed that before, right? So what am I trying to demonstrate to you? Learn that your perspective's not the only one. It's not the only valid one. It's, it's not the only. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Your perspective is not the only valid one. It's not. It's not. Okay. Let's have a little bit more fun. Let's have a little bit more fun. Let's talk about monkey business. Now, if you've seen this before, do not scream out or anything. Let the people who haven't seen this before enjoy the revelation. Okay? So how many of you all have seen before monkey business? See, only about three of you all have seen monkey business. Okay, the rest of you all, um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this because I don't have the speakers mixed up, uh, um, hooked up. But I'm going to tell you right now what what the guy's going to say is, I want you to count the number of times that the people in the white shirt pass the ball. Okay, you ready? Count the number of times that the people in the white shirt pass the ball. Oh, you're right. It says it says it too. Okay. Oops, oh, I have to I have to go back. How many times was it? 16? 15? Any other in the other numbers? 14? 18? Okay. How many saw the gorilla? Okay, let's play it again. Let's play it again. I couldn't I couldn't pause it. Um but but I, I I want you to how many I want you to there's a gorilla that walked right through there. Uh huh. I didn't see him the first time either. I was so focused on getting my count right. It's actually 16. But if you're really focusing to get that count right, you're gonna miss the gorilla. There he is, right there. How many saw? The the, uh, the girl in black leave. Uh, oh yeah, one of the girls left. How many saw 
the curtains in the back change color? Uh huh. Yeah. I, I, that's the point, though. That's the point, right? Th that's the point we're making, right? That no matter how much you think you can multitask, you can't. Not when you're really trying to understand something. So just think about all the times when you really need to get something done, and this is rewriting it for you, right? There, it changes right there in front of you, right? But because of what you're focused on, you don't see it. And that happens to a lot of us all the time. Stuff is happening. We don't see it, and then we tell other people, no, you're wrong because you didn't see it. But I saw it. You go towards your focus. Whatever you're focusing in on, that's what you're going to see. So if the, if, the, if the people in white passing a ball is problems, you're going to see problems. You're not going to see that, good, that nice big good gorilla come through there. Same is true. If you're focused on good things, you won't see that ugly, nasty gorilla come through there because of where you're focused. Yes, sir. Praise God. Yeah, that's good because it just brought to mind that, you know, sometimes we, uh, we're we not able to see the blessing or the miracle that God is doing in this situation because we're just focused on everything else that's wrong. That's right. But God is, he, he you know, he might have just did a miracle for you. You don't see it. There you, you know, go. Because you're not paying attention. There you go. Yeah. Peter's walking on the water. What happens to Peter? He starts sinking. Why? Because he started focusing on something. He, before he was focused on Jesus, that, Jesus, if that's you, bid me come. Jesus says, come. As long as his eyes are on Jesus, he's walking on the water. But as soon as he looks around, he lost his focus. Sometimes it's not about your faith. It's your focus. You're choosing to focus on the wrong thing. You might have Google and Googles of faith. But if you focus on the wrong things, it can nullify your faith. You got the faith, but you just nullified it by what you focused on. Yeah. yeah I'm just going to add, I know for myself, I struggle with focus uh, big time. <laughs> and one of the things that really hurts me is um, I get focused on my job, especially, and there's the things of life. And it's really hard sometimes for me to do well at my job, do well with other things, and keep that meditating on God's word prevalent as well so it seems like there is a for me there's always like a battle to yeah. try to keep my mind more spiritual and on christ and on his word and and not be distracted so much with the things of, of life and it's not just you brother andrew some of us maybe because of other situations maybe it's a little harder but everybody in here has the same issue the question is are we honest to recognize we have it because some people aren't honest or recognize that's what's going on. You just are. Yes. Praise Lord. I just wanted to ask a quick question, sure. actually, off of Brother Andrew's point, because I I don't know if I struggle with focus or consistency, and I think both of them are parallel when I'm starting to, like, when um, the more this is unpacking. Yeah. Because I feel like consistency is a long period of focus. That is correct. An inconsistency is short burst of focus that you have for a moment and then you break. Yes. And that's I, my I think my thing is consistency. So yes. are there are the two synonymous? I would say a little differently, but you're on the right track. Consistency is a product of focus. Inconsistency is a product of a lack of focus. Those are products. They are results of. They're not the same. They're results of. But you're right on target. The more focused you are, typically the more consistent you can be. The less focused you are, you will be very inconsistent. And, and saints, this has application for your lives. It has applications for how you raise your kids. It has applications for how you do your job. It has applications for how you love your husband, how you love your wife as applications for how you serve in the church. Some people, you know, I, I, pastor, I want to do all this stuff in the church. Okay, okay, I give you one assignment, and then you get tired with that after a week. 
The Bible says that's like a man sending someone who has a, a foot out of joint, right? With somebody um, relying on someone who's inconsistent is like walking around with a sprained ankle. You can't walk right. It always hurts. People who are not consistent in your life, who you're relying on, it hurts you. Because you're relying on them. But they're inconsistent. Yes. I thought I saw a hand. Yes, Sister Andrea. I just wanted to add, um, consistency also requires discipline. Yes. So if you're not disciplined, you're not going to be consistent. Keep your heart with all. That's discipline. Oh, saints of God, I want to sit down. And not because of my foot. I want to sit down because there's some things when we hit certain points and some lessons, I want you to really understand the power of that statement. Our lives are as good or as bad as we let our thoughts dictate. You can change your life tonight by choosing to do what the Bible says, which is to think on good things. I don't care what the devil brings at you. I don't care what he brings. I don't care how long it's been in your life. Jesus makes all things new. I don't care what happened in your past. It may be harder because of what happened in your past, but it's not insurmountable. And the devil wants you to give up. He wants you to throw in the towel. Don't make no, they don't make no sense for me to keep pressing on because look at the problems I have. But that is not the reality of life in Christ. Christ didn't come to make everything in life cushy and comfortable. He didn't. He came to give you power that no matter how bad your life looks, you can overcome it. That's why he suffered at the cross the way he suffered at the cross. Not that you could be hopeless, but that you can look at that suffering and say, if Christ suffered, let me arm myself to have that same mind that I'm going to go do the will of my Father regardless of what anybody does to me, regardless of what anybody says about me, regardless of who affirms me or who doesn't affirm me. I will be my Father's child. I will be. And nobody will snatch me out of his hand. This is the power of the gospel right here. This is why we need to repent, to be baptized in his name, to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Because just positive thinking alone won't do this, saints of God. Those watching on Facebook, our pastor's not teaching the power of positive thinking. What I'm teaching is the power of a positive attitude in Christ. Everybody in here, think of your worst situation in your life, your worst. And I'm telling you right now, God can fix that. But you've got to want to let him fix it. Okay, let's go look at why sometimes this is hard for us to do, okay? Genesis 3, I need readers now. Now we're going to go do some Bible reading. It's Bible study. Let's get some more Bible, okay? Genesis 3, 16 through 19. Somebody's going to get for me Job five and seven and then somebody okay um so you you get you get genesis brother alexander you get job five and seven and you get job 14 and one i got you on the next one i thought i saw your hand go up i'll get you on the next round because we got some more to read too okay okay lady black we're reading genesis chapter three verses 16 through 19 Genesis 3, 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, 
and thou shalt eat the herb of the earth. I'm sorry, of the field. Right. 119, okay. Mm -hmm. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, mm -hmm. and unto dust thou shalt return. Okay, we know that this is the product of Adam and Eve's sin. What do you see as the prognosis for their lives based on their sin? What is God, what, 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 What's, what's their environment like? Pain. That's one of the ones I heard, and I agree. Pain. You see, pain is now something. This is from the beginning. We're starting off with pain. What else do we see there? Work. Sorrow. What else? One other word. What? Cursed. And when you're cursed, what are you going to have? A bunch of what? Plob, uh, problems or troubles. So that's, that was troubles and problems is one word. <laughs> trouble and problems. Yeah, that's what you see. Sin equals sorrow, sweat, and trouble. That's its, that's its product. From the beginning, people, we're predisposed to negativity. We're predisposed to it. This is why most of us struggle with it. This is, not a, this is not a deficiency in you as a person. It's just life. It, what was that? Yeah, it's just life. That's, that's all this is, people. That's all this is. From the beginning, it was so. Job 5-7. Who had Job 5-7? Brother Al Jenner? Job 5, ch uh, chapter 5, verse 7. Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. What? Man is born unto trouble like what? As the sparks fly upward. As sparks fly up in the sky, man is born unto trouble. And surely if, you, if you're soldering something or you do it's 4th of July and you, and you light your, your sparkler, some things want to shoot up and out. The Bible says, just like those sparks fly upward, or you see the little embers rise out of a fire, just as surely as those fly upward, we're born to trouble. This is our natural state. Again, without Christ now, this is our natural state. And even with Christ, this is still our natural state. This is Christ can make it better. Okay, 14.1. A man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble anybody born from, how many y'all have mothers in here if you have a mother you were born into trouble not because your mother's trouble now don't start blaming your mother it's just a natural result of you being born it's just everybody this is our this is why it's so easy for us to be negative it's easy and sometimes it's not even what we grew up with, it's just easier. It's easier to complain because these are products of the curse, okay? But you got to know your spiritual heritage. As we come back into where, you know, um, Brother Andrew was saying something earlier about God talk. you got to know God's talk about you. Yeah, we were born into trouble, but, man, I got some doozies to give you about what God thinks about you. Isaiah 54, 17. Loving me this. You got it. You're going to read this one. Yep. Isaiah 54, 17. Who's going to give me Romans 8, 37 through 39? Who wants to read? All right, Sister Laird. And who's going to read 2 Corinthians 2, 14, just the first part of the verse? 14a. I need to read it. Sister Megan, hand went up first. Okay. So, Brother Andrew, when you, he, everybody give him, give him a mic so he, he has it. But this, 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 this passage of scripture, I quote to myself, this is part of my self-talk, especially this 54, 17. This is Pastor Black's self-talk. I self-talk to this to me all the time. Whenever I get discouraged, almost I come back to Isaiah 54 and I speak it over my life. Come on. No weapon formed again. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon formed 
against you. No, no device, no um, a plan, no ideology that anybody has formed against me. Come on. And every tongue that is rised against thee. <laughs> and even people who speak evil against me and talk about me and don't get me. Keep reading. In judgment thou shalt condemn. When I stand before God, I ain't got to say nothing. God is my vindicator. This is what keeps Pastor Black out of arguments. Why am I going to argue with you? God told me he'll vindicate me. And I know what God says also in his word. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. So why do I have to fight with anybody? I don't. Oh, glory to God. Keep reading. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. This is the what of the servants of the Lord? Heritage. What's the heritage? Uh, you get it yes. from your father. Yeah. A her- an inheritance. No, that was good. That's good. An inheritance. That's the easy way to read. A heritage is an inheritance. This is the inheritance of the children of God. God gave this to you. God gave this to me. I ain't got to fight. Go hallelujah. I ain't got to. There's no weapon anybody can form against me that's going to prosper. Come on. Oh. And their righteousness is of me, ah. saith the Lord. And their rightness is from me. I'm the one who makes you right. You, your righteousness is not of you. It's of me. I'm the one that said, Mike, you're cool. Brian, you're cool. Brother Santos, you're cool. God says that to you. I quote this over myself all the time. Anytime something happens and I don't understand it, or anytime I feel like, man, they, they're out to get me. Because sometimes I feel like people are out to get me. I go right, I go right here. <laughs> no weapon. I pull a little Fred Hammond, a little sass kicking in there, right? Okay, so, so this, you got to know who you are. Know who you are, Brother Suarez. Nothing. And you in the military, you know about weapons. Bazookas. What's the AK, what's the machine gun? M- MK-49, right? Right. Rocket launchers, <laughs> tanks. No weapon formed against you when you're in Christ now. We gotta keep put, we gotta keep saying that yeah. when we're in Christ. No weapon formed against you, Brother Suarez, can prosper. God promised you that. This is your heritage. This is your inheritance. It's coming from me. And your righteousness is from me, brother. Can't nobody tell you you ain't good. God says you're good. No matter what, you're good. People saying you ain't good, but God says, Elder, you're good. Don't worry about the people. You're good. All right? Yes. I just wanted to add that we can't ignore. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. But I feel like in my life, I have not been able to ignore the devil's thoughts that he puts in. Like, okay. for instance, if he says, you're not worthy. Right? Yeah. There was a long time for me that I had to deal with that thought. Yes. And I know the devil was trying to put it in there a yes. lot. Yes that I wasn't worthy, but so I had to have an answer. Yes. So I love God's word because he gives an answer Absolutely. to the devil's lies. Absolutely. Just like Jesus did when he was being tempted of the devil. If thou be the son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written. He tried to quote scripture Jesus. It is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee. Right? And Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He came back with the word of God. You all, you, you always have to have something to supplant the devil's thoughts with. That's why you got to know this word. Y'all saw me before. You saw me bite. I'm not going to bite this one because it's new. I bit my old one. But you got to, I didn't bite down. You got to eat this word. You got to eat it. You got to eat it. So it just comes out of you whenever you're in trouble. Right? And you don't let those fiery darts of the enemy get past your shield of faith, which is the word of God. Eat the whole, eat the whole roll. Absolutely. God wants you to eat the word. I, I, I didn't make it up. Bible's in me. I didn't, Pastor Black didn't come up with that. I'm just, I'm just parroting back what scripture tells me we should do. Okay, Romans 8, 37 through 39. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Romans 8, 37 to 39. Yes. Nay, 
In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. In, in what things are we conquerors? In all these things. All these things, and we're just conquerors? Yeah. We're more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. Through him that loved us. Through Jesus. <laughs> you can't lose. When you're in Christ, you cannot lose. Amen. I say you're going to get everything you want now. But you can't lose. <laughs> and I will ask you that. And if you let God take a hold of you, he'll give you what you want. Praise like he did with Solomon. Like he did with Abraham. Amen. Yes, sir. We're on the winning team. Amen. We win. We know how it ends. We're going to win. Keep reading, Sister Laird. For I am persuaded yes. that neither death no. nor life yes. nor angels uh -huh. Nor principalities. Yes. Nor powers. Yes. Nor things present. Yes. Nor things to come. Yes. Nor height. Yes. Nor depth. No. Nor any other creature. Nothing else. Shall be able to separate can us. separate me. From the love of God. From God's love. Which is in Christ Jesus. See, you got to be in Christ. You got to be in Christ. Look at what Jesus said. There's nothing that can separate you from God. No problem can ever snatch you out of God's hands, out of his love. The Bible says God so loved the world, right? He gave his only begotten son. But the Bible also says he spared not his life. And if he freely gave his only son, how much more so will he not freely give us everything? That's in that same eighth chapter, a little bit earlier up. God, if he gave Jesus Christ, or maybe it's the fifth chapter, if he gave Jesus Christ, and that was his most beloved son, then nothing you ask him is a problem. That's what you have to see. 2 Corinthians 2. Oh, my. Who had that first part? Yes, Sister Megan, just the first phrase of that. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Stop. Thanks be to God who what? Sometimes. Only when we're full of faith. Always makes us to do what? Fall apart. Cry. Be sad. Mope. Be gloomy. Show everybody I'm going through. He always causes us to triumph. By ourselves? Through Christ. Remember, you got to stand Christ now. None of this is good if there's no Christ. But with Christ, all things are possible. Okay? All right. We have a few more slides here to do, but time is almost gone here. I'm going to just see. Can I just bust through these real quick? Okay. So, salvation brings us righteousness. All these from the scriptures. Righteousness, victoriousness, and triumph in Christ. That all, yeah, I, I got to clean up some of these words here. <laughs> um, but, 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 but all of this comes from being in Christ. You got to know who you are, saints. You got to know your spiritual heritage. And when the devil says no, you got to know these words. You got to come smack him right in the face. And no, don't, don't, don't say but to me. Don't say but to me. Because when you say but, you, you, you just, you're just disannulling what God is saying. Just accept what God said and say, okay, amen. So let it be. Okay, I got you. Look, you got to guard your thoughts. I'm going to just read these to you real quickly because I have them right here. Psalm 19 and 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You want your thoughts and your meditations to be acceptable to God. Remember, God is, you're his temple. He wants to be in a temple that is glorifying him. So don't let your thoughts, which are part of your temple, be thoughts of God can't fix this. Or God's not in, God, this ain't going to happen for me. Or this problem's too big. Or, you know, this situation's too tough. What are, you know, whatever the words are, right? Affirm yourself in God. I can do some things through Christ. Ah, I can do all things through Christ. Who does what? There we go. Philippians chapter 4 basically tells us what to think on, verses 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, 
whatsoever things are just. Look at these great words. Whatsoever things are pure, if they're lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's what God wants us to do. That's where your mind has to be. You cannot give your, your mind any time to think on negativity and not obey the scripture now. How many people here are Christians? Christians. How many are Christians? How many are Christ-like? Okay. How many aspire to be like Christ? Okay. We all do. I, I, you know, I didn't want you to be like falsely modest or something like that. But we're, I, we're all striving to be like Christians. If you're striving to be like Christian, this is where you have to think. You don't, we don't have a license to think negatively, negative, negatively. Jesus died too long for us to be thinking negative. I don't care what you're going through. Remember that cycle of how you think. You want it to be virtuous. You want positive thoughts. All these scriptures we're talking about, you want those in there. So your belief gets stronger that God can do all things. Then your attitude brightens up, and now your actions are really positive and great. Even when people treat you badly, you can treat them really good and not be bad that you have to treat them good. You can generally want to treat people good and feel good about it. And not have a, oh, I, really, I really want to slap them. No, 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 no. If you let this virtuous cycle build up in your heart, okay? Okay, we're going to have to stop here. But what I did is I also gave you a bunch of characters in the Bible. And we'll come back next week and we're, we're going to do this. We're going to talk about characters in the Bible and we're going to see the power of their positive attitude. We're going to see how the attitude took them through. The attitude made the impossible possible. It's their attitude. Because a lot of people believed in God in the Old Testament or Yahweh or Jehovah, which is what, whatever you want to call them, or Jesus Christ and the new. But some things didn't happen for them because of their attitude. Okay? All right, we're going we're gonna to stop here. Praise God for each and every one of you. Thank God for seeing Brother Santos and his family out in Jesus' name. And uh, you, you all were here Sunday too, right? Yes. Nah. <laughs>